Welcome to Cisco Training Videos. My name is Trevor. The topic for this video is going to go in-depth into the understanding of network object groups on the Cisco ASA command line interface. Let's begin. Network object groups are a useful feature that exists in the Cisco ASA iOS. I personally use object groups as often as possible, but before I go in-depth into the benefits of using them, I first want to define exactly what an object group is. Let's say you're the network administrator for an environment, and your boss comes into your office the moment you sit down in the morning. And he says, Hey Trevor, I need you to block 350 IP addresses. The server admin just called me saying that he was looking over some server logs from last night, and found that 350 IP addresses were acting pretty malicious, and they were, I don't know, SSH brute forcing or something like that. I need you to block them on the firewall. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, first of all, you need to figure out why something was getting SSH brute force. Let's go ahead and look at the access list on this firewall and see if we can figure it out. So I see that the access list 101 is the access list that's applied to the outside interface. That's going to be filtering the ingress traffic coming from the internet to your devices behind your firewall. Let's go ahead and look and see what's inside that access list. And there it is. Do you see it? Access list 101 extended permit TCP any any over SSH. That means any traffic sourcing from any, which is the entire internet, destined to any, which is any server behind your firewall, is open over port 22 or SSH. We need to remove that first of all. Now let's say your boss said that you only needed one specific IP address opened up for SSH. So let's go ahead and add that access. Okay, much better. We no longer have SSH opened up to the entire internet. You only have SSH opened up to the host at 3.3.3.3. That's just an, an example IP address, but let's just go with it. Your next thought after your boss came into your office was, well, yes, of course, that's exactly what a firewall's purpose is. Of course we can block IP addresses. So now the next question is, what is the best way to do this? We have 350 IP addresses that we need to block. Let's go ahead with your first initial thought. Let's make 350 deny access list entries. I already prepped those configurations out, so let's add them. Are you ready? I'm going to add them. All right, and there you have it. I just added 350 deny access list entries to our firewall's running config. Let's go ahead and look at our running config now. I'm going to do show run access list 101 and oh, wow. That's very difficult to read. So is this really the best thing to do? Clearly the answer is no, of course not. That's a terrible thing to do. 350 access list entries as you can see, really clutters your device's running config, and it makes it harder to look at. And from my experience, when things are harder to look at, that makes the device more difficult to support and potentially troubleshoot. So this is where network object groups come into play. Okay, so I want you to think of an object group as a giant bucket. You can place all 350 IP addresses into this giant bucket, and then place that bucket in one single deny access list entry. Do you see the power of that? You now have 350 IP addresses, or objects, being denied in one single access list entry. You now also have the ability to add and remove as many objects to that object group as you'd like at any point in the future, all without ever needing to touch the access list itself. You're simply updating the object group. Okay, so now you know what an object group is, let's look at the syntax to create an object group. First go into global configuration mode, and then type object-group network, and then the name of the object group. In this case, we're going to use deny-ips. Once you enter that, you now need to define the objects that are going to be inside that object group. I already prepped that command out. I'm just going to paste it in right here, and you can see it being added. It's the same 350 IP addresses as before. Okay, so now that we've made the object group, let's make the access list and reference the object group in the access list. Okay, so I just issued the command access list 101 extended deny IP. The source traffic is anything in the object group deny IPs. So there's the source, and the destination is any, anything behind the firewall. 
Now let's look at our access list. Much better. Check it out. We only have one single line that's a deny. But when we look at the system configuration, you can now see that that object group is broken down. And this is what the firewall is going to look at every time a packet comes in. You see how this is line 1, line 2, line 3, and then all of our object, all of our denies are line 4. They're the same line in the running config, but in the system configuration, you can see that object group deny IP is broken down in all of its contents right there. You can also see the hit count, so this will be really awesome to see increment as you actively block packets through your coming to your firewall. So when you actually utilize the network object feature on your Cisco ASA, you make things more efficient. And when things are more efficient, your device is easier to support. And from my experience, whenever a device is easier to support, my customers are always happier. They're happier because I can do what they want in the most accurate way possible. Oops, let's not forget to move our deny access list entry to the top. Remember, access lists work from top down. A packet that's supposed to be denied may possibly get permitted through a permit access list that's placed above the deny line. So let's go ahead and move it by doing the following. I'm going to remove it, and then I'm going to re-add it, but I'm going to update the line number. And now you can see the deny access list entry is at the top of our 101 access list. Thank you for watching. I hope that was informative. Please leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below.